How's it going, Dopamon fans? We have a special one for you. Back in October, we gave you our top 16 rankings for the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, and now we're back with a full first round, a sort of a midterm ranking. Yeah, we got a mid-season January, uh, December rankings, whatever you want to I know a lot of uh, websites are bringing out their rankings. Mm -hmm. We uh, This is less of a mock draft, more of a rankings. We don't have teams here because it's obviously not the end of the season. Yeah. Just be speculating standings. At this point, mm -hmm. so don't generally like doing that. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, you're excited for the entry draft, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. We're on the road here to 400 subscribers pretty soon, which is pretty dope. And uh, a lot of new people in uh, in the channel. So... Uh, welcome if uh, you haven't seen any of our other videos, and welcome back if you have. And without further ado, Alex. Yeah, number one. I don't think there's a lot of disagreement here. Shane Wright. Yeah, Shane Wright for me too. I think it's still, still the obvious, the obvious mm -hmm. guy up there. He hasn't, um, not the most dominant start. You know, people no. expect from a number one potential first overall pick. Uh, but he's been pretty hot lately. He has 11 points in five this his last five games before uh, the OHL got shut down. Um, and his skill just is overwhelming. Uh, you can see it. He, yeah, obviously, he's not putting it in the net. He didn't start too hot, but it shows. Uh, and now he's going to the uh, the World Juniors. Yeah, exactly. We'll get a full showcase of Shane Wright coming up in the next, mm -hmm. next few days. Um, 26th Boxing Day. Um We'll chalk up this slow start to uh, him not playing at all last year, as a lot of the yeah. OHL guys yep. were, so that's what I'll chalk that up to. And the team hasn't been great either. Uh, he's like The top six has been mixed up a bunch. Uh, you know, the, the whole team is just kind of suffering offensively, and you can't put too much of that on him. you got to look at his game overall. It, he is clearly just a step above the rest. Absolutely. Number two, I got... It's uh, different from my, my previous rankings. I have Matthew Savoie here. Uh, Savoie moving up six spots from eight in my uh, preseason top 16. Um, just having a phenomenal start with Winnipeg. 17 goals and 30 assists in 29 games. Uh, he's so much confidence with the puck. Plays at a very high speed uh, while maintaining control of the puck. And is uh, quickly becoming uh, everyone's favorite for number two. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he was always my favorite for number two. I had him uh, two from the start, so he doesn't move for me. I still have Matthew Savoie uh, going second, uh, ranked second. I think he is just uh, incredible. He's a little bit small, so I think uh, people are a little yeah. bit, you know, a little bit unsure on him. But his the points that he is putting up in the WHL are well above anybody else uh, in the WHL in this draft class. Like, he is just putting up numbers. He is a clear uh, number uh, two here, number one in the in the W. And if it wasn't for Shane Wright, like I have a feeling that this is going to be a kind of McDavid Eichel scenario where so, uh, Savoie might get overlooked a little bit throughout his career just because he's going to be behind a guy like Shane Wright. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, could very, very possibly be that for sure. Mm -hmm. Number three for you. Number three, Daniela Yurov. I absolutely love this guy uh, i've said it before i'm gonna say it again he reminds me of uh, a russian stutzla and of course stutzla is the german marner they have you know they like to move the puck north south got a lot of playmaking ability puck moving ability can, can shoot can score got a, you know, a lot of everything and uh i don't see how in today's nhl you can give uh that kind of skill up uh at three that's just where i have him yeah, I like I like Yurov too. Uh, for three, it's our first one that's different. I have Simon Nemec here. Nemec. Um, I think definitely the best defenseman in this draft. Mm -hmm. You could argue for a couple other guys, but I think it's going to be Nemec. Uh, strong two-way game, uh, playing well in all situations. Uh, 13 assists, no goals yet in 22 games in the Pro Slovakia League. Um, as a you know an underager essentially, so mm -hmm. um, having a great start over there, and I think he could be. Pretty good. He won't. He's not going to produce. I don't think at the NHL level as, you know, the points of a top six guy or a top two guy. Um, but I think he'll be very, very well rounded and uh, very good in his own end as well. 
Yeah, he's certainly looking like the most complete defenseman in this uh, draft. Is the the quality of competition he's playing against in Slovakia isn't great, but he is playing at such a high yeah. level that it's outstanding. And uh, for four, who do you have? For four, I got a guy who's jumped up six in my standings from the mid uh, the early season rankings, Joachim Kemmel. Kemmel had a crazy start to the year. He had nine goals in 12 games in, in the Liga. Slowed down a little bit, got hurt, but not a, you know, his hot start, but it wasn't a crazy enough, you know, slow down to not bump him up mm-hmm. my list. Mm-hmm. Um, 12 goals, six assists, and 21 games in Liga. Uh, very good shot. Very, very good shot. Can use it in all sorts of different situations. Uh, off the one-timer, half-wall, power play kind of spot, in front of the net, off the rush. He's got a great offensive tool set, and uh, excited to see what he can do the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. That's why I have him at four as well. Nice. Uh, yeah, I he he was, at the time he got injured, was leading in points, leading in goals for the, the, the SM Liga, which is the top Finnish league uh, an underager, a 17-year-old, was leading in goals in the SM Liga. And, that you know, you want to attribute that to a hot start. And then he kept going. Yeah. You know, it was it was the injury that had to stop him. Like, that's insane. And um, I feel like when once he's back to 100%, he's going to keep scoring again. Yeah, he hasn't, you know, it's been a little bit shaky since coming back. But the way he was scoring is just un- undeniable, that skill. So you got to keep him. Yeah, absolutely. Which brings me to number five. I have Simon Nemich. I completely agree with everything you say. Uh, I love his game, you know, solid two-way game, both ends of the ice. You know, he's going to be a guy for you. Uh, I have him a little bit below because I think the guys above him are just have such an elite, elite potential. Like, these guys are all going to be, like, the best forward on their league. And I don't know if Nemec is going to be a top two, like, star so much as just a solid top four pick. I'm not sure where the... uh, where the uh the the ceiling is on him, and that kind of leads to, I don't think that this draft is very deep defensively overall. Yeah, good points, good points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have at five, I have Danila Yurov. So mm. you've basically flipped three and five. Um, I like I like your you know Stutzla is the you know German Marner and yeah, Yurov yeah. is the Russian. <laughs> um, jumping over um. Miroshenko, Miroshenko, uh, oh my Marishnichenko. god, I, fuck, I screwed up his name last time too, Marishnichenko, <laughs> um, such a tongue twister, uh, for me, jumped over him for as far as Russian staters over the last little bit, uh, has no points in 21 games, Yurov in the, in the KHL, but hasn't been playing very, very no. much over there, we can talk can't about, can't score, getting three minutes a night, that's yeah. embarrassing, we can talk about how stupid the Russian system is sometimes <laughs> later, but um, he has three goals, nine assists, and six games in the MHL, um, very tough to handle. Underrated shot, I think. Um, yeah, and just a you know, great player. Number six. Six is a guy for me that has dropped significantly in everyone's rankings, but I can't drop him personally lower than six. I have Brad Lambert at six. I can't drop him any lower than this. A lot of people have him like I see people in there like he's in their twenties and thirties. Um, yeah. I still think there's something in his game that I really like. He's been very inconsistent in Liga, but he has he has so many tools. He has so <laughs> much skill, and I feel like we're gonna get another Atu Ratu situation where he gets a weird undeserved slide because the Finnish league is sometimes a little weird with how they're you know developing players and the systems that they teach. You know, just might not be conducive to what Brad Lambert wants to do. So, you know, Atu Ratu moved teams, and now he's, you know, blowing up. Mm-hmm. People are going, oh, wait a second, maybe we thought about him higher. So, um, yeah, he's got two goals and four assists in 24 games in Liga. Not the kind of production you would expect from a guy no. who was, a year ago, kind of the set number two guy um, behind Shane mm-hmm. Wright. So, but I can't, I can't drop him any further. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I do have him a little bit lower because at number six, I have Logan Cooley, who is uh, absolutely showing 
consistency with the U.S. Uh, national Development Program. Uh, I think he has a chance to be a solid number one center. Uh, good at both ends. He's big. He's strong. He's got everything. Yeah. Number seven for you. Oops, I forgot that was me. Number seven, David Yurichek, uh, uh the Czech uh, d uh, defenseman. Uh, he's a, a guy that I th I've seen a lot of reports, kind of mixed reports, but he, uh, from what I've seen, he's a big like offensive threat, and uh, it is uh, his ability to score the way he has at the Czech level, uh, the Czech league. Uh, it's insane. The Czech uh, league is well above uh, some of the other minor European leagues. Not not quite Finland, not quite Sweden, but uh, not far below. And for the way that he's putting up points, uh, it's it's quite impressive. Uh, I really like him in this slot. There aren't a lot of good D. Uh, I feel in this draft, I don't think it's as deep. And he's one that can uh, probably has like the most offensive skill uh, from what I've seen. Yeah, I think he'll be a better offensive guy than uh, Nemec will be, but I think mm -hmm. Nemec will be uh, a little bit more well-rounded than yeah. Jack is. Number seven for me is a guy that I know you will fight me on constantly, mm -hmm. is Uri Slavkovsky. Uri Slavkovsky, to me, is a rare combination of power and skill with a really good set of hands. You know, dropping in my rankings a little bit is well, from, from last uh, October rankings, more mm -hmm. of a part from the rest of this draft, kind of closing the gap in this Fair. three to eight, nine range. Um, one goal and three assists in 20 games in Liga, and six goals and 12 assists in 11 games in the U20 Finnish League. Uh, we'll see him for Team Slovakia in the World Juniors. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see him play. Number eight. Hey. Number eight. Number eight for me is a guy you have uh, at six, Logan Cooley. And I agree. Everything you said, he's uh, had a really, really great start to the year in the uh, U.S. National Team Development Program. Uh, 14 goals and 16 assists in 20 games down there. Uh, separating himself a little bit from his American peers in that program and looks like the strongest pick out of that program mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. this season. Yeah, e easily the best of the USDP right now. And I don't think there's there's like any competition. He's just shown uh, too much consistency to, and like elite, you know, a sense that uh, he's almost like ready uh, for the NHL, if if the NHL isn't so good, like he'll definitely be uh, like getting into like training camp and stuff. There'll be some question marks. I have a good feeling about him. Uh, which brings me to number eight. We kind of did a flip at six and eight. I, I like that. Uh, I have Brad Lambert. I couldn't agree more. He has all the tools, and I, I can't drop him much further than this. I have like a feeling that there's some like their you know, draft politics kind of comes into play sometimes and. If you're a player that sort of has like an obvious kind of flaw, you just drop to the second round. Kind of that's what happened to Atu Ratu. People were like, "Oh, you have a th there's something wrong with your play," and they just were like, "No, I'm not going to waste a first round pick on you." And I have a feeling that's why people are kind of putting him that 20 to 30 range. They're like, "Ah, oh, you know, you have that maybe middle six center," but no, he has a lot of skill, and uh, it's just not clicking right now. But I'm not sure. I yeah. can't. I, I'm not sure why he's. You know, like how you can like. I have him at eight. That's he's, he's still just so good. Yeah, I, I'm not kidding. Lo, if you're looking at pure skills on players, he's up there. Like, he's debatable whether it's Wright or Lambert at number one. Like, if mm -hmm. you're just looking at that, he's very, very good. And I, I hope he figures it out because he deserves to be a lot higher on people. Mm -hmm. And at nine, I have Frank Nazar. Uh, sometimes goes by Frank Nazar the third. He's a, a winger, right winger usually, plays center just a little bit, but I have a good feeling he's going to play on the wing. He has a motor on him yeah. that is just incredible. You know, drive the net, making stuff happen. It is, it is un like I maybe compare him to like Yurov, you know, in in a sense that just there's the, who has like a drive with the puck. It, it, it that's it just these two, you know he uh not, that that's just a guy who can create so much offensively and uh. I can't. I want him in the top ten. No, yeah, his skills are just yeah, just to have that elite edge that uh, I know he's going to be putting up thirty, forty, you know, goal seasons in the NHL. He has the potential to do that. Yeah, he goes to the net hard. He goes to those goal scoring mm -hmm. areas. So mm -hmm. I could put that on a guy like him. For me, number nine, I got David Yerichek here. Um, 
I think we covered him pretty well. Uh, he's got five goals and six assists in 29 games in the Czech League so far this season, and is quickly rising in my books. Uh, mm-hmm. Earlier in this season, I only really saw him as a for his defensive capabilities, um, but I badly, great. <laughs> I badly underestimated his uh, his offense that he could potentially bring, mm-hmm. and he uh, he has an absolute cannon from the point. I also want to point out that the yeah, blood of NHL. Hard to score. Yeah. The, the Czech League, it is very difficult to score. Yeah. And uh, the NHL guys, it's not the same. You know, you don't see that big bomb from the point as much as you do anymore. But if you need it, this guy's got it. Mm-hmm. Me for 10. Me for 10. Mm-hmm. Round out my top 10. I'm selecting Connor Geeky of the Winnipeg Ice. Uh, hasn't had a great season on a team that has had a really good season, which worries me mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, everything is still there. I think I had a fourth in my top in my top 16 from October. Yeah, he dropped for me, too. So he dropped a little bit for me. Um, everything is still there, I think, uh, but he needs to be more dominant to be a really good top 10 pick and not Dylan Strom. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 goals and 25 assists in 29 games to the Winnipeg Ice in WHL. So still good because he's on a really good team, but he's not as dominant as I thought he was going to be. Yeah, he's starting to remind me. I know you don't like comparisons too much. I'm going to drop it. Uh, yeah. Logan Brown, uh, 11th overall pick by Ottawa in 2016. You know, a guy who's big, who has everything, but there's just something, you know, some question marks. And uh, dropped a little bit for me, and I'm going to get to him. At 10, I have Ivan Marishnichenko. Uh He has dropped on a lot of people's boards. He is not scoring at the VHL level that you'd expect him to, but much like some other guys in this draft, you're looking at Brad Lambert, he has all the skill. He might have the best, uh, just the heaviest slap shot in the entire draft from a forward. Uh, He's got the best shot in Russia for sure. He knows how to use his speed. He's got all the tools. It's an attitude problem. Yeah. You know, he's got that, like, he's kind of lazy. Sometimes he's not like, you know, he needs to keep his feet moving a little bit under him, and he's not. He's just not skating. But he, he does have the elite reaction speed. He has the tools and foundation for, a, you know, a guy like Kovalchuk Ovechkin. He has that kind of skill, but there's just something missing. But uh, I don't know. I can't, uh, I, I think, you know, drafted by a good team who, you know, can round out his, you know, mental game. That's, you have an, probably the best, one of the best scorers in the draft. Yeah, and uh, I'll reset the board here. We'll move on mm-hmm. to our 11 through 20 picks. I'll start off with you. At 11, I have Uri Slavkovsky. I was a little bit low on him to start this season. I wasn't so sure on him, but he is starting. To, I've, I've been watching a little bit more, and he is starting. To, I'm starting to see what you like in his game. He has a little bit of everything, and for the future of like NHL type hockey, I feel like he has a place in it. Yeah. And he's going to be a guy that every team wants. You know, he's going to get to the NHL and be, able to be like, "Oh, I should have picked him." And uh, he's got a lot in there, and uh, he's he's starting to like click at the the SM legal level, which is, I think, is what I was waiting to see happen. He just wasn't getting there, but he was showing signs, and now that he's, like, it's clicking, I'm I'm on board. I'm on the Slavkovsky train. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. You convinced Welcome me. aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. At 11, for me, I have a guy that you have in your top 10. Just, just snuck outside of it for me in Frank Nazar. Um, second best guy out of the U.S. program for me. Um, jumping a little higher on my list, I think I had him 15th in uh, rounding out my last list. Mm-hmm. Uh, another good American forward, 11 goals, 18 assists in 26 games for him down there. Um, and yeah, he just he, everything you said goes to the areas, you know, potential potential 30 goal scorer in the NHL. Mm-hmm. The dirty areas. He just loves yeah. to do things. He just loves to go there. Yeah. At 12 for yeah. me, I have a guy who might is. The first new player on my rankings, actually, from <laughs> October. Uh, we only did a top 16, but first new guy. I have Philip Massar here. Um, five goals, four assists, and 20 games in the Slovakia League. Dynamic as hell. Plays with really good pace and is an incredible skater. Now, I feel like the skills to be in the top 10 are there, but his size kind of detracts from that. And I don't mean he's small. He just 
he gets bumped off the puck a lot. He's, you know, for a smaller guy to succeed, you have to have that kind of strength in your legs in order to battle in the corners, stay in front of the net. Right now, he doesn't have that, but you know, he is young. But I, all the skills are there to be a very, very good player. Um, so I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and have him ranked a little higher than I think most people do. Um, mm-hmm. I I go for the kind of like boomer bust kind of style picks a lot of the time, and he's definitely one of them. Uh, if he's able to fill out, and get stronger, uh, especially in his legs, he could be you know one of the better picks made in this draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like him a little, a little bit lower, but I like that you're uh, going boomer bust on him. At 12, I have uh, Noah Ostland out of uh, Sweden. Uh, he is on a line. Uh, he's playing for uh, Gardens right now. He's playing on a line with two other draft eligibles who are also incredible. This line's outstanding, so sometimes his numbers are going to look a lot better. And I feel like some people are, it's hard to really track just by looking at some numbers where he's at, but he plays with this, he leads the line. He is the center. He's the one that carries the puck through the neutral zone. He's the one that does all the dirty business. He has probably the most skill overall. He doesn't have the goal scoring finish, but he has the hard work. He's got the energy. He's got the the, the, the mentality, the sense. He's, he's got, you know, everything that you want in a hardworking center. And I really appreciate his game. Uh, I know, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, has been said for one of his other line mates who sometimes gets ranked a little bit higher but i think that just the, the intangibles that he brings to his game are are uh, unmatched uh, uh in in sweden right now so i like uh, ostland at 12. it's definitely something we said for him as the the best guy out of sweden right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for sure 13 up 13 i have connor geeky there he is there he is he is not having as great a season i was expecting from him he's not it's the way he uses his size he plays like he's you know half a foot shorter when he you know could be you know using his size more and he doesn't have the mobility there's something you know he's just not as quick and yeah i I don't see top 10 you know uh, i don't see you know number one center potential unless it all comes together and i don't see it coming together so he might be a guy who even drops a little bit more uh come uh you know our next draft uh draft ranking i'm not sure because the whl is really tough there you know there's there's, a, there's another guy in my teens here from the whl that uh might even be better so yeah he's uh he's trending downwards for sure and mm-hmm. uh Get back on get back on that a little to to redeem himself in people's eyes. All right, thirteen for me. I'm not gonna screw this up. Ivan Mirushnichenko. That's pretty good. <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. Um, second biggest drop in my list from my preseason rankings for two reasons. You touched on them. One is he hasn't had he's had a terrible season. He's he has had a terrible season in either the VHL or the MHL. Um, Both. Nine points in 22 games in the VHL and no points in one game in, sorry, the MHL and point in, uh, in yeah. the HL. Yeah. Also, comments made by international junior GM Sergei Zubov recently uh, after Merston Cheko didn't make the team uh, kind of sent off red flags for me that he came into training camp and was very out of shape part way yeah. into the season. Uh, huge red flag. Still has a, still has all the upsides, like you said, but he needs to put it together. And honestly, the, he's only this high on my list right now because of reputation, uh, and the way he's playing deserves to be much, much lower. Yeah. So it makes a good statement for you to uh, lead into 14 here. Yeah. 14. My hottest take in my, my, my uh, top 32 mock draft I have Nathan Gosher here. A lot of, I haven't seen him in a lot of people's first rounds. I have him at 14. Mm-hmm. I love this player. <laughs> uh, might be my hottest day, like I said. From what I've seen, he's a big, strong, defensively responsible center with some offense and some decent speed. Um, basically what I thought Geeky was going to be. He plays in the QM and JHL with Quebec Ramparts. He's six foot three, 207 pounds. He's big. He's got 13 goals, 11 assists in 21 game, 21, 29 games out there. Uh, the one knock I can have on him right now is he doesn't have a great shot. It's just very okay. 
But <laughs> otherwise, I like this player. He's, uh, I think he's gonna jump on uh, people's boards before the end of the year, and I'm getting the, I'm getting the jump. Yeah, you're gonna get getting the the first. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, I like that. There's a, uh, um, you know, the two way game in yeah. the QMJHL is, you know, yeah, it's unheard really of. Weird specific. Right? Yeah. So he can like he can like kind of change a game. I'm not sure how much that's like. Well, you're the only person playing defense in the queue, so obviously you're gonna look good. Or yeah. if it's you know, or if that is just an indicator of you know him having great potential. I'm not so sure. I'm a little bit lower, but I like that you're going big on him. I'm 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 taking a risk on him. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm doing it. Screw it. And at 14, I have Jonathan Lakaramaki. Uh, he is uh, part two of three of that line from uh, Zur Gardens in Sweden. This guy can score. He has offensive threat written all over him. He loves to throw. I don't know how he manages to put the puck in the net. It is wild sometimes. He just finds it and it's like flicks, and it just happens. I I love his offensive game. Uh, he can play center a little bit too, but I really have him being like, you know, that skilled winger. I really, that's where I see him. So like, I couldn't have him over, over Noah Ostland, even though Lakara Mackey might have an elite scoring edge that uh, Ostland doesn't have. Uh, there's something here that I feel like he could be a crazy scoring threat on some team. And uh, if you don't draft him in the top 15, it's going to be a, a mistake because he's going to light up the board somewhere. Yeah, um, he's a little lower on my list for me. I'm not a big fan of the way he skates. It's a little awkward, but, you know, skating's you know, fundamental. Yeah. It's a little bit, you know, he can teach that. So, yeah, um, yeah maybe a little bit lower. Yeah. At number 15, I have Jack Hughes. Not that Jack Hughes, yeah. different Jack Hughes. Though I really do like this one. I feel like a, a f- some scouts, I've seen him being ranked a little bit lower in like the 20 to 25 range, but... I love what I'm seeing from this guy. He has a drive on him, very similar to Frank Nazar. It is just, he can make things happen. He's so fast. He drives to the net, and he has, like, he's clearly playing, you know, at, like, an insane level in the NCAA. Like, he's playing with guys who, you know, are, like, really good, and he's showing that he can play, you know, at that level. Uh, I think he's being underrated a little bit. I think that there's a, a lot more potential for him, and he's a guy that uh, is just kind of going overlooked for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I think I have him way lower for, mm-hmm. for those reasons. Um, yeah, the guy that's kind of flown under the radar as far mm-hmm. as you know, when you think of prospects in the American system, you think of the USHL, the US and you know national development program. He's in the NCAA. Yeah, this so, is this is tough competition here. It's tough. Not putting up great points, but he's playing very well. Mm-hmm. Number fifteen for me, another American that I've seen drop hard on some people's boards, and I have Rutger McGroarty here. Um, mm-hmm. has 12 goals, 14 assists in 20 games for the U.S. US national development team. Uh, drop for me, you know, here and in, in, in the future probably is due to his skating. It's on the below average end. Um, mm-hmm. Not a great skater. He's got all the tools offensively other than that. Uh, he's got a really good shot, has a good positioning. He just doesn't, you know, quite have the wheels or the... The edges, his edge work is weird. He, I, I, there's a little bit of you know when I watch him when I watch him skate, I, I look at him with you know mm-hmm. squinty eyes. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, he dropped a little bit for me, but still has a, a little bit of potential. So I'll put him here at 15. I really like him. I think he has skills to be. Or, you know, compete with Cooley to be that number one center, but uh, I don't like his consistency either. Yeah, you know, true. sometimes he's just not on. You know, sometimes he is. He has the tools, but he's not making them work just yet. And uh, I, I, don't, I can't put that in my top fifteen. It's a little bit rough. I have him yeah. a little bit lower, but that's the way it goes. Yep. I'll bet on the the tools sometimes. Anyway, mm-hmm. sixteen for me. Uh, it's another American. A lot of good Americans in the first round again this year. Uh, that program is churning out people. I have Seamus Casey here. Um, defenseman, right-hand shot. Five goals and 12 assists in 26 games for that development program. Like I said, very good defenseman in transition and is just so slick with the puck. Um, work in progress on the defensive side, I think, from what I've seen, but is a plus-plus player through the neutral zone and in the O zone. Um, loves to carry that puck through the and develop in the offensive zone. Walks the line well. Good skater, mm-hmm. could be could be one of the better defensemen out of the U.S. program. 
Yeah, there's two two defensemen coming out of the USDP that I've been uh, kind of having this, you know, fighting yeah. each other for which one's better for me. And we'll get to that uh, mm-hmm. when we get to the other one. But uh, for now, I, I do agree. I'm liking uh, Seamus Casey's game. He is he is scoring all the right ways. But I have a different offensively minded right handed D for number 16. Ty Nelson I at the OHL. I feel like there's some guys have been pretty low on him, but I like the way that he's been scoring. And uh, in the OHL, you know, the, he's, he's, you know, arguably the best defenseman in the OHL. And uh, it's not a very points defensive wise, heavy. Yeah, yeah points wise, you know, and it is not a very defensive heavy drafts, in my opinion. There's I, I feel like he has an edge that really like he plays a type of Canadian hockey that I'm enjoying. And uh, I feel like you'll fit on any NHL team. Yeah, he's like- got a low you like right-handed shot defensemen NHL teams? Get a first-round pick this year. They're if you want a defenseman, it's not that deep, but, but they're all right-handed. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll we'll get to Ty Nelson for me later. I have a wildly different opinion on Ty Nelson than you do, mm-hmm. but we can discuss that when I get to him in my my picks. Anyway. Seventeen for you. I have Denton Matechuk. Matechuk. Yep. Pronounce that one correct. And let me make sure I got the note right this one because I'm I don't want to confuse him with another WHL player. Oh, uh, another left-handed defenseman out of the WHL. There's two of them that I really like. I have Denton Matejchuk uh, here. He has everything. He oh, he creates unbelievable chances. I I see him flying up. Uh, the draft rankings. Uh, yeah. I did one uh, a month ago in November. I didn't post it, didn't share it with anybody, but he was, you know, in like the 30, 40 range. And I've been watching him play, and he is making unbelievable things happen. Yeah, he and, soared uh, up everyone's rankings. Yeah, and uh, he's going to keep going up for me, you know. And uh, uh, in the WHL, like, I, I think there's you know, when I try and like rank WHL players, like, I, I uh, it's hard to, to put him below on our geeky now. So. And this is, you know, already changing for me. <laughs> yeah. What do you have at 17, Ryan? I have, and I like to call him Rutger McGroarty Light. I have Isaac Howard here. Um, Howard. <laughs> I is another guy who's just a little frustrating to watch right now. Uh, dropping in a lot of people's lists. Has 11 goals and 22 assists, assists in 26 games in the U.S. National Team Development Program. Uh, more of a playmaker than the power forward type, the you know, the shooter power forward that McGordy seems to be, but he's just he's frustrating. He's frustrating. He has all the skills, but he hasn't been playing very well uh, for the U.S. team. So dropped a little bit on my list, but you know everything is still there. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, mm-hmm. have him at 17, but probably deserves to be a little bit. Have him a little bit lower. So maybe I'm a maybe I'm the one gonna you know bullseye the dart on that one maybe yeah me for 18 yes you for 18 i have a swede here that you don't have yet Mm -hmm. um he's my you have drafted two swedish players up until this point i have drafted Mm -hmm. none he's my number one swede out of here in liam ogren um left winger out of jur gardens one goal, one assist in 18 games in the NHL, but or in the SHL, but, HL, yes. <laughs> Swedish Hockey League, but the but 15 goals and nine assists in 14 games at the J20 level. A very good skater, great offensive instincts and creativity in the O zone. Has got some size and strength to his game too. He's six foot one. He's not that small. It's not a big part of his game, but he can you know can rough it up a little bit. Also, I think he's got a really good shot. Not overly powerful, but a deceptive deceptive release he's got that kind of like matthews style snap hook release thing and uh yeah i think he's gonna be the best swede out of this draft and now he just to be clear he is the third part of that line out of your gardens uh you didn't mention it it is uh ogren is generally on the left or the karamaki on the left and then uh with uh oslin down the middle Austin, thank you, uh, Ost, Ost. And uh, I just, there's something about Ogren's game. He had he made it work at the SHL level that uh, Austin and Lakaramaki couldn't. 
but at the J20 level, I feel like that there's like an edge that maybe uh, Austin like Lakaramaki have that uh, Ogren doesn't, and I think that maybe part of the size and his skill set kind of helps him play against adults. But I don't know if that's going to translate, you know, as well. Maybe he gets maybe he gets into the NHL a little bit quicker, but I don't know if that you know his like the potential is the same compared to a. a uh, Austin and the Karamaki. I feel like just because I'm not going to have him, uh, you, know, you know, spoiler alert, I do have him out of my first round. So uh, that's why I'm talking so much about him. And yeah. uh, that's just a, uh, that's why, you know, I feel like there's just a the hole missing in his game. He's not leading the line the same way the other two. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. There's something that he brings the others don't, which is why he's there and what makes the line so dynamic. But yeah, that's, I'm glad we disagree. Yeah. Uh, we Fine, we mm-hmm. disagree on players, especially in mock drafts in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see who yeah. or right in a decade. Yeah, when we're both wrong. <laughs> when we're both wrong and it didn't matter anyway. Yeah. Number 18 for you. Number 18 for me, I have Seamus Casey. I love his offensive game. He is, uh, he's really showed this year that he's, you know, uh, like as the season's progressed, that he's really taken the mantle as the number one D uh, for the U.S. development program. Uh, I'm liking his game. He's got, you know, so slick with the puck. He's making it all happen, and he kind of said it all the first time. Mm-hmm. But it does lead well into my number 19. Who I've been doing this back and forth of who's better. And uh, if, when uh, the October ranking we had, I did have Ryan Chesley higher than Seamus Casey, but I think I'm going to drop him below. Uh, Ryan Chesley hasn't just shown... He has some of the offensive skills, but it hasn't really clicked yet. But he does have a very solid two-way game. He's a solid defenseman. You know, he's the guy you want in your your middle pairing. Uh, Now, I can't, you know, the way that Casey, even a guy like uh, in the USDP, a guy like Lane Hudson has kind of stepped up, kind of overshadowing uh, Chesley offensively. So I feel like he's going to drop down uh, the rankings a little bit, but do not underestimate this guy's two-way game. He is a defensive phenomenon. Yeah, um, I have him coming up uh, in mm-hmm. a little bit, spoiler alert, but uh, yeah, I he's been flip-flopping with Casey for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, 19, I have a guy that you picked that we were both really high on recently, didn't have him really on our first round radar, um, a lot of people didn't, is Denton Matejchuk. Mm-hmm. Um, everything you said about him, yeah, he's absolutely soared. Um, he's got seven goals. 18 points in 29 games in Moose Jaw, the WHL. His strongest asset is his skating, um, showing now he's able to produce some offense. Um, last few years, you know, as a you know draft minus two year, he wasn't really able to produce any offense as a lot of mm-hmm. younger guys in the in the WHL specifically do. But he's really start to figure it out, and uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see what he how high he can get on people's uh, draft boards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a complete game, right? Like, it yeah. started out as just, like, a fast defensive kind of two-way guy, and he's exploding offensively. I like the way that he's grown, you know? It's not just, like, here he is. Like, here's his progression, and he can keep getting better, and I really appreciate that about him. Yeah, talk about Jai's trending downward. He's trending up real quick. Yeah. Number 20 for me is a guy you have, we talked about at length here, is uh, Noah Ostland. Ostland. Um Six goals, 16 assists in 16 games in the J20. Uh, eight games with no points in the SHL. Um, strong two-way, uh, two-way guy. Really good stick in the, his own end. Uh, has some decent playmaking abilities, I've noticed, too, in the Ozone. He's mm-hmm. a, a little bit on the smaller side, and have to get bigger and stronger. He's only 163 pounds, but strong, strong pick here. Hmm. I like him here, too. And it uh, 20 for me, I have Philip Mazar. I'm glad that we both had him a little bit higher than where he's been before. He's a guy that's definitely trending up. Uh, he's playing in uh, Slovakia. His competition isn't great. Yeah. So his skills are showing, but at the same time, uh, the physicality that he's competing with is actually pretty high because, you know, he's, you know, the the against men. Yeah, right. Like he's playing against men. He's, he's, getting you know knocked around a little bit but his skills are still showing you know i don't like to be too critical of how a 17 year old competes against like physically against men so much you know it definitely is a concern you know still in like the junior league it you know does have that issue but uh you know that's something you could 
you know, you can grow into your body. You can get stronger. You know, you can get your legs under you and some balance and, uh, you know, some great fight for the puck. And I feel like when you have all the skills, it's worth uh, investing on a guy like Philip Mazar. Absolutely. Had have a really you... complete game, too. Yeah, really, really solid game, I think. <laughs> Jump up the board in the future. 21. 21, I have Elias Salomansson out of Sweden. I'm going, uh, I've gotten a few more Swedes than you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I feel, I, I don't remember. I think I had him maybe not in my top 16. I don't remember anymore. It was so long ago. He is a solid two way D. Uh, and he is making stuff happen. He is in both ends of the ice. He's able to score. He's got a, a very strong shot on, on him. I'm liking that. Uh, and uh, you know, there's um, he's not putting up a lot of assists, but he doesn't have to. You watch the type of game he plays. He's not like you know a crazy playmaker in the offensive zone. He's just a solid two way D. He's going to be good in your own zone. He's going to help you move the puck. And uh, you know, he can you know clap him from the point too. You know, there's some, I'm like I'm like I'm liking what I see. And uh, I'm comparing him to you know, there's another Swedish defenseman I have in the first round, and it's been another kind of you know back and forth between the two of them. But I like Salamansson in this spot. Yeah, I got a few uh, few options from Sweden here, potentially. Mm-hmm. Around, uh, when it's all said and done. For me, 21, Ryan Chesley. Um, two goals and three assists so far in 25 games for that program. Uh, like you said, offensive production just hasn't quite come yet for him. Um, but his, his defensive play for me is what makes him such a strong pick for the first round. Um, ceiling, for me... I, the way I distinguish ceiling, um, sorry, Chesley and uh, Casey, um, I find Chesley's ceiling isn't as high as Casey's, but I would say it has a higher floor. Um, yeah, safer pick. Safer pick. Um, so it's whether you, you know, how you value your your first round picks, I guess, if you're an NHL team. So we'll see who comes out on top. Mm-hmm. Twenty two is me. Here's another Swede. Already talked about Jonathan Lekaramaki. 17 goals, 14 assists, 22 games in the J20 league, but uh, has uh, gotten a sniff pro league, seven games, but no points. Not a lot of minutes, but that line obviously is the J20 Jurgardens line we keep talking about. Yet another forward with a great shot, good drive in the Ozone, work in progress on a defensive zone, and work in progress, I think, too, with his skating stride. Is it a little bit wonky? Like I mentioned before, uh, yeah, solid first round pick. I still think. Yeah, there, there's just too much skill there to, yeah. to pass up on at, at uh, this point. That brings me to 22, and this is my favorite player in the draft. <laughs> favorite player, Alexander Perevolov or Perevolov. I've heard the VB silent. Yeah. I've heard the VB silent as a W kind of sound. I like to go uh, Perevolov, Perevolov. He is incredible. He's got incredible speed. He's got an incredible sense on him. He loves to jump, just jump on the puck, see it coming, be on the puck, be the first one there. Rebounds, corners, defensive zone, neutral zone. He is just, he's got his head up. He knows where he needs to be. He's fast, skates into position, and just constant energy so much drive so much energy you can tell he's got like a positive attitude on him he's always just got like this you know this chippy kind of this vibe to him and uh you know always in position you know he's, he's he's not a guy that has to like double check you know think about where he is he's just flowing you know and uh i love his game i love his game he is uh, he can shoot he can you know do everything he can pass he, he's got like everything he is my favorite player in the draft alexander Perevolov. Here's a here's a question for you. You haven't done your mm-hmm. Russian rankings on the channel yet, like you did last year. Is he a mm-hmm. guy for you that has the potential to take over the second spot over Mershnichenko for you? If he drop no. continues to drop, no. I okay. just Mershnichenko's skill is a different type of skill. Uh, obviously, Perevolov. Uh, I believe he's on pace to have the most points in the MHL ever. Oh, yeah. I know <laughs> uh, uh, it is. It gets a little bit skewed because you know if you're good, you get called up to the VHL, KHL. So like, there's a kind of there's like a line, but it's still incredibly impressive. The run that he's been on is unmatched at the MHL 
ever. So uh, it, it very well, you know, he can very well jump in the, into like the, uh, the the preteens for me. When you look at a guy like uh, Rodion Amirov, who went at 15, I mean, you compare him to Prevalov, there's there's certainly like reasons that you could say Prevalov should go at like about the same rank. Right. Even if his KHL just hasn't quite clicked at the KHL yet, but that's uh, it's for different reasons. Cool. 23. 23 for me. Let me pull that back up. Apologies. I have Isaac Howard. Uh, you know what? I liked him a little bit more than uh, Rutger McGordy, okay. but I completely agree with you. There's just something frustrating about his game, but I, I the, the, he can still make plays. You know, I, I feel like there's something. I feel like it might be the team that he's just like Maybe. gets bumped on on the wing. Like he's not as good as Frank Nazar, and I feel like he's not getting like the the same opportunities that kind of fit his style of play. Maybe that like I, I'm just um like he's being like kind of out of place. I still really like his game. I think he's got incredible amount of skill, and uh, uh, you know as a playmaker, I I just I I, I really like. Uh, I don't think there are as many playmaking wingers this high in the draft that can you know he's one of the better ones and uh i like him here yeah normally in the draft and and once you start getting in the 20s the really high upside guys are gone so you have to mm-hmm. make do guys you think could figure it out and isaac howard's a good bet for that 23 for me i have tristan leno here defenseman out of the gatineau olympic qmjhl big six foot two 174 pounds, five goals and 10 assists, assists, uh, assists in 26 games so far this year in the queue. Um, biggest strengths, I think, are his uh, puck handling skills and ability to make that simple play. You know, you know, just a good first pass out of the zone kind of player. He's not overly dynamic or you know an amazing skater, but he has enough creativity to be effective on like a power play or in the offensive zone um, and defends well in his own end. It could be a relatively safe pick here for a team mm-hmm. looking for a guy with just with good skills and a high ceiling. Um, we talked about guys with you know higher upside being in this part of the draft. Could be a pretty uh, safe defender defender pick. A team looking for that kind of player, right hand shot too. Yeah, and I like that. Uh, for his size, he can move the puck uh, puck pretty well. I like that. Uh, you know, six foot two, bigger guy. You know, you don't you don't know what to expect for puck mobility, and he's got some to him. You know, he's not he's he can move the puck, so I appreciate that about him. I have him about to come up myself. Cool. Twenty four. Do you have a twenty four, Ryan? I have another American. Flipping in on my list here, it's Cutter Goche. Cutter is a great first name. I don't know where that came from, but. <laughs> 15 goals and 11 apples in uh, 26 games in the U18 US program. He's not playing with USDP. Yeah, so he's playing in the US NDP juniors. Like it's a mm-hmm. slightly different team. Anyway, very well rounded. Uh, really, really good shot. Projects well as a solid NHL winger. Um, and yeah, another another guy out of that uh, mm-hmm. US junior program. I personally have him ranked just a little bit lower. We kind of have the same order of guys in the USDP, but I have him, you know, like yeah, where they all drop. More, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I could, uh, you know, spoiler alert, just because this is a top thirty-two, I have him ranked thirty-third. Uh, so he doesn't quite make my first round. I, yeah, I feel like I need to, you know, there's just a little bit more I want to see from him, maybe, but to to be a first round pick. But I, I, I like him. He is a scorer. He's, he's got talent, and uh, he's going to bring it. He, he will score at the NHL level. Which brings me to 24, Tristan Leno. There you go. I like that we can kind of really close yeah, here. We, uh, yeah. Yeah, such a safe pick. You know, he's got a bit of everything. Simple game, and uh, you can't go wrong. And in the 20s, on a safe right-hand shot, D, that's, mm-hmm. that's exactly what you want at 24th, 23rd overall. Absolutely. 25. At 25, I have Rutger McGrordy. He is a guy that uh, I feel like has fallen off skills. Like you said, he's got yeah. a lot of it, but his skating just isn't there. And the consistency that it's just he's just not able to, you know, game in, game out every single game, just, you know, be the kind of the center that you want. And when you have that many holes, he might be a guy that I could even see dropping into the, the second round uh, when uh, come July. Very, very possible. Um, I'll check some. Okay. Mm-hmm. 20. Where are we? 
25 for me. 25, and I really like this player. And he might be a little high for a lot of people's lists, but I like him. I have Marco Kasper, the Austrian. Austrian playing in the SHL. Four mm -hmm. goals, two assists, and 24 games in the SHL. Uh, three and four in six games in the J20 National. A big, powerful center that seems to be in front of the net every time I look at him. He's there every shift, and that's why where he's gotten most of his goals, obviously. Front of the net, offensive guy this season, going to the dirty areas. Big question mark on whether he has that high-level creativity to be a first-round pick, um, and you know, not more than just a guy. You know, mm -hmm. a centerman, you know, a third-line centerman in the NHL, but that's where you score goals in the NHL. That's where you score goals in... The you know the big situations is front of the net and he has obviously no issue going there. Um, yeah, we'll see if he has. He hasn't quite gotten the opportunity to be creative because he's doing that you know drive the net, drive the net, drive the net thing all the time. So we'll see in his development whether he has you know the skills to be really you know deceptive and creative in the offensive zone. Is a very very interesting player to watch when mm -hmm. I scout him. Yeah, I have him about to come up as well. I I like his game. I, I I see him. He's another guy that's been kind of going up a little bit more slowly than other people uh, up the draft rankings. But uh, yeah, he's showing he can score at the SHL level, and that's that's all you need. You know, if you're a guy who can score, that's that's how you win games by scoring more than the other team. You know, that's sometimes that's all that it matters, and that's why I feel, I feel like a guy like uh, Liam Ogren who can put it together at the SHL is going to get a few, you know, maybe a little bit more looks than, you know, than they would have if he hadn't been able to produce at such a high level. 26 for me. 26, I'm curious what you think of my pick here, 26. Because you are so high on Alexander Paravalov. Paravalov. I have his countryman, Gleb mm -hmm. Trikazov, ranked slightly higher. Um, eight goals, six assists, and 15 MHL games. Plays a good, intelligent, has a really, really good shot, and has really good hockey sense creativity. I just like something about him just slightly more than Paravalov. I'm curious whether you have him in your first round. I don't know if you do, Trikas. I, I do not. Yeah. I have him in my second round. I have. There's a few holes in his game that I guess was the time to discuss it. Yeah. Uh, he he does, he has an incredible drive. He has the skills, you know, right in front of the net, dirty areas. He ha he plays the kind of like I don't, don't want to call it dirty, but like gritty kind yeah. of North American style of play that's really gonna shine. It kind of kind of almost reminds me of like Ridley Gregg, mm -hmm. you know, in a weird way. But uh, there's some there's a few flaws in his game. He is not great uh, in the defensive zone on the cycle. He really needs to keep you. Know, he's keeping his head up, and it is it is a struggle for him. Doesn't always know you know he he's got a good stick. So when he's in the right spot, it's happening. You know it isn't always there. And the way that he like makes a first pass from the D's, he's I don't trust him making a breakout pass very much. He's can be a little bit irresponsible sometimes with the puck. And there's just something missing that I'm like, mm, you know, he doesn't, he, he's not, he, he's scoring, you know, the goals the right way, but the rest of the game is just kind of a question mark to me. And uh, you'll see when I do a scouting report on him, if you agree or not. There you go. For 26, that brings me Marco Kasper. Uh, everything you said about him, uh, the Austrian in Sweden. There are not many Austrians in this draft. We might get to that. Spoiler alert. You know, there's a future uh, video here about top prospects. I uh, like Marco Casper. You know, he's the guy who's been able to score. He's going up uh, everybody's draft rankings. And uh, I'm not sure where to place him either. He might be a guy that falls by the end when people realize, yeah, he doesn't have that first round uh, kind of talent. Maybe he doesn't, you know, maybe he is just a one trick pony and, you know, and he can kind of slide down. But for now, 26th, we're both, we both agree. So uh, I like that. Yeah, something there with him. Mm hmm. And then 27 is a really big name. He's been a guy that, uh, you know, for years has always been kind of known, Philip Bystead. He's uh, really been popular uh, internationally. I don't know why. He's just a name that's popped up yeah. a lot. I think being a huge, he's six foot five, six foot six, seven. 
it's, yeah, huge. it's huge it's massive and i think that when you're that big and like 15 16 you kind of get noticed internationally a lot more but uh and he's, he's he's playing he plays a big game he's got a lot of skill he's got a bit of everything i don't you know i don't see him having he's not like a you know a number one guy uh i'm blanking on the byfield he's not like a yeah. byfield kind of guy you know uh, he doesn't have that like you know number one center potential but he has a lot there's a lot to his game that uh, i don't think that uh, he'll drop out of the first round yeah uh, especially right size i don't have him in my first round he's just outside for me mm-hmm. but uh yeah i could see the upside there uh, i could see why his type would also yeah. be a early second round kind of selection for some teams you know yeah i agree and 27 for me, I'll finally, I'll finally put him in here for you, Alex, is Alexander Parapalov. Um, yeah, like, he's ripping it up points-wise. It's 17 goals and 17 assists in 24 games in the NHL. Uh, biggest thing that stands out about him, you went into the most detail about them, but uh, his offensive skills and vision in the Ozone. Um, I find his play away from the puck leaves something to be desired. He's great when he has it. You know, when they're you know in the offensive zone, but his off the puck play is what you know separates for me Trikazov mm-hmm. and Paravalov. So, Interesting, because I like his off the off the puck play. I really like it, and that's something that I will bring uh, talk about in my uh, scouting report. Because the way that he jumps on pucks and is kind of prepared for them is his anticipation is that away from the puck play that like a rebound will just find his way onto a stick a puck will fly around and he's on a breakaway and it's just it kind of there's a flow to his game and he's just kind of flowing with it that you know and we'll see yeah, i can't wait to watch a video that, on yeah, him in more depth yeah. and maybe that's something that you know somebody a team doesn't appreciate but i do so that's just it we're not that far away from you and all. all no. said and done. Yeah, this is all right. So 20, right? This is, we both like him for good, you know, the right reasons. Yeah. A guy that I am way down on at 28. <laughs> I had him ranked 14th. He's the lowest, you know, pre ranked in October for me in that, our mock draft video. The biggest slide is Elias Salomonsen of Sweden, mm-hmm. defenseman. Uh, Eight goals, nine assists in 23 games in Sweden. Jude Junior 20 league in Sweden. I haven't liked his game at all so far this year. Points aside, I just don't... When I watch him, he doesn't provide a consistent enough effort for me, and I question whether the motor is really there for him, especially in his own zone defensively for some reason. You'd think it'd be the opposite, but... Yeah, just doesn't for me have the kind of foot speed and drive and you know tenacity you'd want from a defenseman and especially in their own end so dropped a little bit for me uh all the skills are still there now if he picks up his game maybe he's you no know, stuff playing where mm-hmm. he is right now i don't know but yeah biggest drop for you me. want uh he, he six foot one he is a little bit of a bigger guy at his age you kind of expect a little bit more yeah. You know, kind of not aggressive and snarl necessarily, but no, just but work ethic. Aggression, like, yeah. yeah. It's it, it's tough. It's tough watching him sometimes mm-hmm. for me, anyway. I agree. I like that. I like that. At 28, I have Owen Pickering, who is a guy that uh, definitely didn't start on anybody's uh, first yeah. round. He's a guy that people thought was going to be a fourth, fifth round pick, and he is showing. Uh, on a very, very bad Swift Current Broncos WHL team, that he is a bright star. He's got he's got size and knows how to use it, and uh, it, it's something that uh, you're, you know, not a lot of great defensemen in this draft. Uh, but he's one that's got a. Uh, be, I think because he's on a team that sucks, he's getting overlooked. But he can do a little bit of everything, you know. He can, he, you know, at six foot four, you don't expect a guy to be able to move quickly, but he can. You know, he's big, strong, mobile, gets the puck moving, and uh, he's uh, a brings a uh, strikes fear into the uh, the opposition every game. So twenty nine, twenty nine, right? That's back for me. I have. Simon Forsmark uh, out of Sweden. I have a lot of Swedes in my first round. I am just now noticing. <laughs> it's a good year for Sweden and yeah. for Russia. Uh, Simon Forsmark, he is an offensive D. He is putting up ridiculous numbers in the J20. Uh, obviously, you have him below uh, 
Elias Salamanson. I have him below as well. There's definitely uh, parts of his game missing, but uh, he is scoring more than Salamanson, and uh, it, sh- it it just shows it's credit to his offensive skill. It's definitely there, but having ranked him lower, that's a, it's a you know that's a slash on his uh, defensive skill, which is kind of lacking. He's kind of just a just offensive. Yeah, high, you know. very highly offensive mm-hmm. from what I've seen too. So, yeah, it's a good scene. Mm-hmm. Good pick for a late first I've heard round. Him being a a boomer bust pick as well. I've seen him being twelfth on someone's list, uh, just because of the numbers he's putting up. You know, mm-hmm. as like an offensive guy. You know, maybe a team kind of is like, yeah, you know, that's the kind of offense we need. But uh, I'm not too big on him compared to some of the other D. But a first round pick. Absolutely, twenty nine for me. Now, I have him a lot higher than some people seem to be. I really like this player. I have a soft spot for him, and he plays for my favorite OHL team. So I might be a little biased here. Danny Zilkin. I like Danny Zilkin. I have for a few years. I've seen him play a bunch in Guelph. Um, Plays a very mature game for me, and his coach in Guelph plays him in every situation. He's relied upon a lot. He's their top center uh, he's a good skater. He's able to create a lot of good separation off the rush for chances. Solid defensive, and he's sneaky creative a little some of the time in the offensive zone. Um, is able to find a lot of good lanes. He has to. He mm-hmm. plays on a line. We've actually been, me and you, have been to a couple live Gulf Storm games. We have a little clippets of those on our channel. Um, he's yeah, his uh, game-winning goal against the London Knights. That was. Whew. You know, <laughs> poised in the offensive zone to quickly jump on a, on a, you know, retrieve the puck and score. That, you know, it's an elite sense that he has. Uh, I, I love him, too. I don't have him in my first round. But like you said, his ability to create space with the puck on the rush, I think, is uh, something that teams haven't yet seen. Mm-hmm. You know, that maybe that's why he's dropping. But he has... He has the elite skills to make him a first round pick. I have him just a little bit outside. I think there's still he, you know, still just needs to pick up a little bit more. But oh man, he is he's got a a lot of everything, and I do love him too. Yeah, another thing I wanted to point out is he plays on a line most of the time, uh, five on five with Sasha Pastorjov in Guelph. Um, Sasha Pastorjov is not very good in his own end, and Danny no. Zolkin a lot of the times have to has to pick up that slack, and even <laughs> with the kind of anchor, bad defensive winger that he has, he's still showing to me to be a very good defensive center, um, which says something to me in the AHL or in the OHL. So. Yeah, we've we've watched Guelph. The entire team has to pick up for Pastorjov. <laughs> it's kind <laughs> yeah. of funny to watch sometimes. Yeah, it's a good thing he dropped uh, dropped to the third round. Uh, I see why scouts are right about that one. Yeah, number thirty for me is a guy that I might have a little underrated. Is Jack Hughes. You have him in your teens. Mm-hmm. Uh, Northeastern University NCAA player, like we said. Five goals, four assists in 18 games in the NCAA. But he had 34 and 38 point, uh, points in games last season with the National Development Program. Um, do you understand how difficult it is to find game tape on this guy? For me, I... Yeah. I NCAA is hard. When you type in Jack Hughes anything... <laughs> <laughs> you do not get this player. <laughs> I, you have to really, really dig deep to find some game tape on on this Jack Hughes. Um, hopefully, New Jersey picks him. Mm-hmm. That would be insane. Imagine, oh no. Yeah, he's starting to figure it out in the NCAA, but it's a little bit harder competition there for sure. Yeah, the the level of competition for me is what, uh, like why I have him ranked so high that he's able to like compete. You know, especially offensively, he's scoring at the NCAA. You know, I guess he's 18 now, but uh, as a 17 year old before, like I'm, I was impressed. And uh, I, I originally had him at uh, you know 16. They dropped him to 20 in November and back up to 16, 15. Like, I, I can't, I can't see him dropping too far past into the 20s. I don't 20s. think he drops out of the first round, but I have him late. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see. And uh, that goes to 30 for me. And I have uh, Leon Bixell. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one right. Uh, uh, playing in uh, Sweden. He's playing for Lexans. Lexans, your favorite team, Ryan. Yeah, my favorite uh, team. 
<laughs> because Kas- Kazimir Kaskasuo is their goaltender. That's why you love him. Uh, yeah. and he's uh, he's able to perform at the SHL level. Uh, I haven't, you know, that he's got a little bit of everything. Solid game, and uh, I, I I can't see the way that he's able to like compete at the SHL. I like him as a, a late first round pick. Yeah, I he... could definitely see him dropping a little bit, depending on you know you can point out some holes in his game. But like, I and he's he's pretty solid, uh, both ends, you know, and, and uh, I like that. Yeah, as a the kind of player he is, he, he's he's sticking pretty well in the SHL. Mm-hmm. He's not. I haven't saw him. I haven't seen a whole lot of him, but. From what I've seen, he hasn't gotten very overwhelmed. He's been very solid. He's just been playing well. Um, to me, Let's he's see. outside outside the first round for me, but I wouldn't be shocked if he snuck into the first round on someone. What's happening? Reset. And we'll just get our last two picks in here. Either and side. I will start. Uh, Nathan uh, Gaucher, Gaucher, I'm not sure how to pronounce it because he's French. I've seen uh, the QMG. Yeah, I've heard both. Uh, I'm going to go with Gaucher. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Englishized version of it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like, he has all the scoring tools, but I am not so sure about the rest of his game. Uh, I do have him in the first round, just like you do. For you know, for those reasons, it's just you know he's gonna score. Like he just has you know the future NHL uh, NHL kind of uh, projection uh, for goal scoring. But the rest of his game, I'm not so sure if you know he can you know compete for a top six NHL spot, or if he's a guy that they might be like, eh, we're not so sure. The QMJHL, I'm never I'm never too sure about. Yeah, anyway. Q is some a weird league sometimes, especially <laughs> on the offensive side, but. Mm-hmm. I, I like the upside he brings. I have him way up higher on my list, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited to keep watching this year. 31 for me. Is a guy that has slid a little bit in people's rankings, but I still have him sneaking into the first round. Is You just snuck his name in here, eh? Bryce yeah, fool. McConnell Barker. Um, <laughs> long name. 11 goals, 7 assists, uh, 26 games this year. And Sue, Sue Stanbury Greyhounds of the OHL. Having an okay start to the year, but has dropped in the rankings. A lot of people, like I said, still I think he's a strong choice here uh, as a shoot first center with a decent amount of quickness and solid, you know, straightaway speed. Um, he's not incredibly dynamic as far as you know a top top pick goes, but uh, for a late first round, early second round pick, I could see him being a, a good choice for a team. Yeah, I like him too. I don't have him much further down. Spoiler alert: I have him 36th overall, not yeah. m- much far down. You know, we're pretty, we're pretty both. You know, uh, high on this guy being in this kind of range, and that's what I'm seeing from all the scouts too. You know, a lot of guys I'm seeing like, oh, one guy has him ranked 25th, one guy has him ranked 95th, but you yeah. know, everybody seems to be pretty, pretty 25 to 35 on McConnell, uh, McConnell Barker. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. And mm-hmm. to round out my top 32 in the first round here, I have. Ty Nelson. Now. What don't you like about him? Let me know. Elite Prospects says that he's five foot ten. I call absolute bullshit, Elite Prospects. This kid is not five ten. This kid is like five seven, maybe. He plays and looks significantly smaller than that, but that's not why I don't like him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I just wanted to point that out. That's not why I don't like him. Uh, he's got good mobility and is definitely a power play quarterback, but he doesn't have the best speed and struggles a little bit in his own zone with his decision making. Just that, you know, first pass or you know, short passes to guys where he's going. And at this point is a borderline first round pick for me. I still think he's in this area, but to be a rush defenseman, especially in the NHL at that size you have to have like elite, elite footwork. You can't be five foot eight, five foot nine, and not have good footwork. It just mm-hmm. doesn't work. Not as a rush mobility defenseman. Um, so that's why he's a little lower on my list. Uh, just the style of game he plays isn't conducive mm-hmm. for me at the higher level. Um, I couldn't agree more about that skating. He definitely needs to pick up, and it'll translate also to the sense of physicality. You know, yeah. he needs to grow. Like, you know, you can't be like, oh, just 
or half a foot, but like he does need to get bigger and stronger and add that to his legs, make him a little bit quicker. Uh, you, you know, when when I talk about you know first round D, that's that's one thing I look at, especially when you know if, if you're looking back at our uh, scouting reports for Daniel Chaika, that's what I said was my the biggest you know factor on him was his uh, elite reaction speed and footwork, and I and uh, that's what get, got him into the first round. And I still have Ty Nelson in the first round. I think he cracked under pressure a little bit yeah that's what i mean by his and can't making. yeah and he can't you know he's kind of like oh i don't know and it's kind of part of it maybe is that smaller you know it kind of feels like a little like the pressure on the ice but i think that's something that a mental game you know obviously the skating you know that's a physical game but the mental yeah. side of it i feel you know, I, I do see a little bit of like hope in there that you can like calm him down make the right decision and he has the skills to do that if he can just calm the shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you said at the start of this, I don't like making player comparisons. I think it's yeah, dumb. Okay. But mm -hmm. in this case, at his peak at Ty Nelson's ceiling, I think he's as close to Ryan Ellis as you can possibly mm -hmm. be. But he, he needs to work on a lot of things to get there. But that's mm -hmm. to me, that's his ceiling. I like Ryan Ellis more, but yeah, I see yeah, what you honestly, mean. Yeah. <laughs> they, same style, smaller, good mobility, can play offense, can play defense. He kind of has to you know, grow into it a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm a lot lower on him. I snuck into my first round. I was really close to not putting him here, but snuck him in. I think he has the... Uh, I, I, I like to see his ceiling as a Tyson Berry. That's oh, where... Okay. Yeah, you know? And like, if there's just like an edge that he can Tyson Berry get can't play to, in his own end, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's exactly. <laughs> that's, there's a, like, there's something like you know, and like if you can make it click, you know, Tyson Berry bounced around, you know, like yeah. after you know Colorado, it kind of dropped off, and then Toronto and now Edmonton, like you, he found his place because his game, his style of play matches the system and stuff. I feel like that's what you can get out of Ty, uh, out of Ty Nelson. Uh, on the right team, coach yeah. the right way, of course. But I, I see, I see a huge like potential there to be a kind of like, oh, have a, a fantastic, maybe fifty, sixty point assist season, you know, on a team like Edmonton with a guy like Connor McDavid. But yeah, he's putting up the numbers in the OHL. number two D. I don't, yeah, yeah, that's I, I like, I like him at, at this spot. Which brings me to my final, uh, uh, in the first round at thirty-two, I have Vladimir Grudinin. And uh, let me just pull him up. He is an incredible skater. He is very small, but he has a very strong lower body. And that's what I really like. You know, guys who are smaller but strong that don't let their size affect them. He plays like he's six foot two. You know, he he gets he physically engages with forwards when they're, when defending the rush. He's, he uses a stick. You know, uh, and like he's you know defends like he's six foot two, but he also plays offensively like he's five foot ten. He's got a quick reaction speed and hand eye. Just just flies and jumps into the rush when he when he sees the uh like the pressure change and uh under pressure he makes incredible decisions and that's a uh, I'm really liking that. Uh, he's got great hand eye. He's got some great stuff. The, what he does need to work on, ironically, is his offensive zone play. He's a great puck mover, great in the D zone, but you know he doesn't have like the dynamic uh, making stuff happen from the uh, from the offensive zone blue line. There's a uh, maybe uh, just like an offensive sense. Maybe he could work on. I'm not so sure. He's got you know amazing transition game, two way skill, both ends of the ice, uh, and I, I don't think a team can pass on him in the first round. This is. He's got, you know, a little bit of a lot of everything and a little bit, you know, a medium offense. And uh, I think that offense has a p huge potential to grow because he has all the skills. He's got the reaction speed. He's got the hands. He's got the feet. He's got the sense. Just kind of, you know, making it work. And that's uh, he's still putting up ridiculous numbers in the MHL offensively. But I can tell that there's an offensive game missing. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you want to do That's That brings us to the end of our first round. Mm -hmm. Do you want that to is. do any honorable mentions, or are you going to save that for... You know what? Ready? Yeah, this is going to be... I feel like I want to go to 160. <laughs> I don't want to stop at 32, Ryan. So I, I think I'm going to do... I have ranked my... Uh, you know, a little bit, you know, subject subjective. It's not, you know, I haven't seen every every single person play, but I have ranked 160. That's five full rounds of first-year draft-eligible uh, skaters for the NHL entry draft, and... Uh, I'm going to do that video. 
So keep your eyes and ears open for that one. Yeah, I'm wanna... not going to drop no honorable mentions for me just because, like, I'm going to leave it, you know, I'm going to leave that for that video. But if you want to drop some, let me know. Uh, I'll drop a couple names here uh, that guys that almost snuck in for me. Uh, Pavel Minchukov of the Saginaw Spirit in the OHL, been playing very well there. Owen Pickering, who you had um, in your first round. Uh, guy we neither of us did, Owen Beck, uh, Mississauga mm-hmm. Steelhead mm-hmm. Center, uh, playing very well in the OHL. Um, who else? Matthias Havelid is on a lot, not on a lot of people's radars. Another Swede, another defenseman. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Those are kind of the guys that I have all those guys in my second round, so keep your eyes and ears open for that one. Yeah, guys, it's just snuck out of my first round for me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that is it for this long mock draft, our full first round. Keep an eye out on the channel for Alex's big, big video if you want, you know, all sorts of information on a crap ton of players. He'll have it for you hopefully soon. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, (laughs) <laughs> Thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you made it this far. We'll have a lot more uh, draft content coming out for you soon. We'll do a couple more uh, mock drafts as the season goes along mm-hmm. toward the NHL entry draft in July. Um, and then obviously we'll Maybe even less. two more. Maybe but two the way more. that we'll we've see. been going at it, yeah, it might be one in February, March, one in July, June, July. So yeah, keep your ears open. We're going to do scouting reports on some guys too. So uh, a lot of these names are going to provide a lot of video. I've already been collecting it for you guys. You know, yep, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there in our scouting. That'll come in uh, probably this spring, closer to this spring. Mm-hmm. But anyway, mm-hmm. thanks so much for watching. Like I said, take it easy. Peace.